Hello, race fans. My name is Rob Howden, the voice of the USF Pro Championships presented by Continental Tire. And it is the off season, but we are just weeks away from getting things started for the 2024 campaign. And during the off season, one of the things we do as we get into February, people start talking about which drivers you're going to want to watch in the new season. And joining me here today, one driver we will definitely be watching in USF 2000. That is Max Garcia from Paps Racing. Max, great to have you here with us. It's the off season. How excited are you? Like lots of testing being done, but it's time to go racing. Yeah, it's really exciting. You know, testing's one thing, but racing's a completely different thing. So can't wait for St. Pete. So one of the things, obviously, like I said, you kind of have a focus on you now. There's a handful of drivers, of course, coming back to run USF 2000 again. You're in a bit different story because you didn't even start the season last year because you're only 13. You had to wait till you were 14 years of age. How's it feel coming in thinking that people are looking at you as a contender? Is that a lot of pressure right now? Or do you think, you think it's earned? Um, I think it's earned a little bit. Um, you know, we all obviously had a uh, really good run with Simon and the team last year, obviously winning driver and, champ and team championship. So I'm feeling confident, but no, I don't put pressure on myself. I know you've done so much racing throughout your career. You've won lots of championships in karting. I had a chance to, of course, watch you do that. Let's talk about the fact that Simon Sykes was there, your teammate, right? You were able to kind of learn from a driver who had lots of starts, significantly older than you. What kind of maybe momentum does that give you moving into the new season? A lot of momentum, you know, obviously we're, we're pick favorite for a team, you know, we, we know we have good cars and I think it almost kind of helped that I missed the first two races, you know, I was young, I didn't know what I was expecting and seeing Simon kind of go out and, and pretty much dominate the first two races was pretty cool. You know you can do the same thing probably, right? That's it, you have, you have the right car. So let's, one of the things I want to do obviously is get a chance for people to know who you are. We've talked to a number of drivers. Where did it start for you? Where, where did the passion for motorsports get started? When did you first turn your first wheel? Wow, um, so my dad obviously works down at Homestead Miami Speedway and that's really what sparked my, my love for racing. You know, it's, I, as far back as I can remember, two years old, you know, watching NASCARs running around Homestead for the championship. And that's really when it started for me. You know, I turned my first wheel in 2016 at Homestead in a kid card and then yeah, the rest is history. And the thing is, very early on, you kind of worked your way through to running national level racing. You very quickly became one of the top drivers, first, of course, in the cadet categories and into, into junior. Talk a little bit about your career. And I think the fact that people don't realize sometimes that while this is a very high level competition, through karting at nas the national level, it's unbelievably competitive. Yeah, it's it's really, really comp competitive. You know, we were obviously in a dogfight with RPG my last year in karting, which, which was really, really tough and, you know, Congrats to those guys, you know, they got it out at the end, but I couldn't have done it without Eric Jones, you know. He had really been make, the one making the car go fast. I was really just driving it at that point. I, I had to try to mess it up to, to not win. It's interesting you bring up a guy like Eric Jones, right? So I've known Eric, of course, he's been around a long time. It's the people behind you. It's not just you behind the wheel, right? You mentioned the fact you're with Paps right now. It was uh, Simon Sykes as your teammate, but there's so many people at Paps that Augie has. Talk a little bit about the people at Paps that are able to you know, work with you to make it all happen. Yeah, you know, it's only the really the top guys that you see in motorsports, but there's a lot more people, you know, like crew chiefs, you know, tire guys, fuel guys, you know, my crew chief, Miles McDaniel, we've, this is gonna be our second year working together, you know, our, our fuel guy, Cristo, and our tire guy, Matt, you know, those are the guys that really make the car run. That's it, right? They're the kind of behind the scenes. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, you from this year to you last year, right? You think about the fact when, you know, the first races you came in to, you'd done some, some testing, but the way you felt that first race, how much different do you feel now in the off season? We're getting ready to go to St. Petersburg. You must feel so much different than you did last year. Yeah, because I was kind of taking a shot in the dark, you know, right. obviously skipping juniors is really, really difficult, you know, jumping pretty much right into the deep end. And I didn't know what to expect. So I think coming into this year, knowing, you know, the racing dynamic, because obviously karting's a lot different racing, you know, pack racing with four or five. This is more of a one-on-one -on -one dogfight who's going to, you know, race better. And so I feel like, all that experience from last year is really going to help for next year. You're actually a really good example, and you'll be able to kind of speak to it. You know, you came straight from carts to cars, obviously, and people don't really understand. You know, karting, as we know, grassroots level of motorsports. This is where you kind of learn the initial racecraft. But what are the big transitions? What are the stuff you have to transition from karting to cars and learn the first time you get into a race car? There's so many things. Obviously, you have a, um, a radio, which you don't have in a go-kart. True, That's, yeah. That was a scary thing for me the <laughs> first time. Having somebody in your ear the whole time? Yeah. That, yeah. Saw getting talked to in the corners wasn't my favorite thing when I first jumped 100 into a car. 100% focus and somebody's talking to you, right? Yeah, <laughs> that wasn't a fun thing. I kind of wanted to unplug the radio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then obviously you have a lot more control, obviously, in, in the car. In go-karts, yeah, you can control the motor, how 
you know, how you want it to be tuned, but this you can really control the, you know, brake bias, where you want the brake bias to be. You know, just you have so much more control what gear you're in, what gear you're not going to be in. And so I think, but the biggest thing at the end of the day was braking, you know. I was just going to say, everybody talks about braking. Yeah. Tell me about that. It was, it was different, you know, obviously before getting in, in my, in the car for the first time, I had to, you know, train a lot because <laughs> wasn't ready for that. But it's a big hit of the brake, obviously in these cars and it's all going to get harder. So it's, it's an ever growing thing. And, but braking was the biggest thing, you know, karting, there's only rear brakes. So you're anticipating, you're waiting into the corner, you're anticipating that rear lockup. Yeah. This, that had to kind of be worked out of me the first couple of tests. Worked out of you, yeah, yeah, yeah. unlearn something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> unlearn right. something and then figure out the front brakes. So, you know, that that was the biggest thing for me. I know they talk a lot about, yeah, the initial brake pressure and how much pressure you want at the start, then trailing off. It's not even so much the braking, but it's getting off the brakes and rolling that corner speed, which is not something you do in karting because there's so much, you can throw it in and let the tires kind of, kind of settle the car as well. That's got to be a tough transition. Yeah, it was for me because you know, you never have to keep the front of the nose into the corner in a go-kart. You don't have any aero, so it's kind of like <laughs> you can use your body weight and the tires and the curbs to get you rotated, but you really need the front of the car and the brakes to get you into the corner. So you missed the first couple of races last year, as we know, before you turned 14, so you didn't have that full season. Took some pressure off, like you said a little bit. Simon was kind of the guy. You could be there and learn. Now you're the elder statesman, essentially, at Paps Racing coming in in that seat uh, with the team. Uh, do you feel pressure now, more pressure coming into the start of the season? Not really, no. Um, you know, I, I uh, always just want to show up to win. Um, I'm not thinking about championship at all, at all, but, you know, the person who finishes in the top five the most will most likely win the championship. There were times last year where you were one of the most exciting guys to watch. You made some wild moves, you know, down the end of the corner, turn three at Toronto being one of them. You made a lot of really big moves early on as a young driver. How would you characterize yourself as a driver? It, would you say aggressive, controlled aggression? When you think about Max Garcia, what do you say? There's a lot to me. Um, I feel like I'm aggressive when I need to be, but uh, one of the big things is patient but aggressive. I know that sounds like two polar opposites, but patient but aggressive really means like patient enough to know if you, you know, start P3 and you lose a spot, go to fourth, you can make that back and then be aggressive when you need to be aggressive at the end of the race. Exactly that. So let's look down the, to the season 2024. Is there a race you really want to win? Is there one of the ones on the schedule you're like, man, I, I know I want to win the championship, but that's a race I want to win. I think there's there's two for me. I think both Indies, uh, that would that'd be really cool. You know, obviously Indianapolis Motor Speedway is just the most special place. <laughs> yeah. And I think IRP is, is one I want to win because we had so much speed. We just got caught out with a bad set of tires, which was unfortunate for us. But, you know, Simon ran back through the field, but we had so much speed in practice. It, it's another one of those races, the Freedom 75, right? That some, so many great drivers have won. It's part of the Indianapolis 500 race weekend, the night before the 500 or the uh, Carb Night Classic now. Uh, but it's also a one-off, right? Number one, it's one and a half points. So it's great for the championship, but you're the only driver to win on that day. You know, we have double headers, triple headers. You can share wins. You're the only one, you're the one in the spotlight. Do you think you have a car to do that this year? Oh, for sure. You know, this Paps car is good anywhere we go. It's really hard to, to not have it good, but it, it kind of makes it even more special when you're the only winner on a weekend. It kind of feels like you're an Indy car already. Very true. So let, let's, you've obviously followed us. I know that you followed the, 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 uh, the USF Pro Championships. Is there a driver that you looked at coming up when you were kind of younger, when you were running cadets and you're running juniors, that you're like, man, I want to follow that guy. Maybe, maybe you raced cars with him. Maybe he was part of the team you were with. Is there a driver that you kind of want to emulate? Colton Herta, Pato Award. You know, they were in lights when I first got into uh, karting. So, and Pato also raced with Eric when he was younger. So yeah. that was kind of cool, you know coming through basically the same steps as him. I was gonna say, the, both those drivers were in Tag Cadet, just like you were at one point too, right? Yeah, it, it shows how great a karting, karting is for, you know, young drivers. Indeed. So Max, obviously you didn't get a chance to run St. Petersburg last year. You're a Florida guy, right? You live down near Homestead. Uh, that's obviously a big race for anybody to win. It's a big because it's coming out of the gate strongly as well. Can you give me your thoughts about running St. Petersburg? You've run almost every other race, but you didn't run that track. It'll be your first time there. St. Petersburg just looks like a fun track, you know, at the end of the day, you know, walking the track and being able to see it from, you know, obviously I was there during the weekend and, and seeing it, but I think obviously being from Florida, it'll be a home, home track technically, but you know, obviously a home race, want to win that. And I think 
I just love street courses, man. So I think that's going to be an awesome one to win. And that's the interesting thing. Although you didn't run St. Petersburg, you joined the series at, at Indy. You were able to run Toronto, right? So you ran the race at Toronto. At least you have a, a little bit of experience on the street circuit. Because as you know, St. Pete, you've seen it. You've seen all the in-car camera. It's so treacherous. Yeah, it's really treacherous, even on a street course, because cars don't run, you know, race cars don't run there all year. It's, it's street cars. So first session, it's, it's a little sketchy. You know, obviously in Toronto, we literally wasted, like, we had a 30 minute session, I think 28 were spent going slow. I think yes. literally the last lap was the only lap that I pushed in braking. The track's so dirty. Yeah, it, and it's it's obviously harder for us because we're the first cars on track, you know, as being in a feeder series. And it's almost like, who's gonna be the best? You know, you don't really want to show everything you have, but you kind of need to test it, but you don't want to end up in the wall. That's it, it's always balancing that fine line. Now, one of the things, obviously, people that follow IndyCar, these guys are full-time. That's what they do for a living, they're paid athletes. A little further down the line where we are down here in the, in the USF Pro Championships, you got to go to school. You're balancing your personal life and school life. You know, you're 14 years of age, you're going racing here. How do you do it? How do you balance, like, you know, how much time do you spend in the books? Like, do you have to maximize your time? Yeah, it's really all about maximizing my time. You know, obviously at the track, it's where I love to be, but also at home, I play travel soccer and I okay. ride a lot of mountain bikes, but my mom's a big um, emphasizer on, on school, so if the grades aren't good, we, we don't play soccer or mountain bike. That's it, right? So again, let's, let's go there. You're talking about mountain biking and playing soccer. One of the biggest things about this sport is it's physical. Every level you go up, it gets harder and harder. The cars are harder to drive. You need to be more physically fit to be able to be there at the end of the races. What's your regime other than the soccer and the mountain biking? Are you hitting the weights? Yeah, a little, uh, once a week and okay. along with four days of soccer practice. So it's some about working five, five days every week and then, you know, soccer games on the weekend or mountain biking. And mountain biking's a tough sport, you know, obviously riding, there's not a lot of elevation, but it's more when you have your hands like this, it's more push-ups yeah. because of the shocks. And so. Did you find any issues last year, early on, your first time of course racing? Did you find yourself getting tired at all? Or were you hitting the gym pretty big time last year too? I was hitting it big because I didn't want to be on the back side of that needing to you know, find that strength mid-year. So I think the only time I really had a problem was the first time I went to IRP. You know, okay. the, the first session, it, it took a little bit getting used to, but by the end of the day, we did a, a race distance run and I was, I was fine. I always think that almost IRP, it's, it's, I know it's a lot about phys, the physical side, but it's the mental side too, right? It's not, yeah, your arms are getting tired, but it's literally, the race is 75 laps of 100% focus. Road America, you get those long straightaways, right? You're grabbing gears, you kind of take a little bit of a breather mentally. What's it like doing, I'm sure you've done a race run already at IRP, obviously we know that, you've done that, you've done more testing. What's it like to go 75 laps there? It, it's like you said, very, very, you need to be mentally strong. Um, and we don't get yellows normally either, that's the thing, no, it's straight through. Yeah, and I mean, you're almost getting dizzy turning left so many times, and it's not it's not long. Like, even at Indy, you're gonna have time in the straightaways to uh, relax, but IRP's a, a quick little track, it's 21 seconds. Yeah, pretty much. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, you're gonna be physical, but it's who can be mentally strong, you know, if you don't wear your tires up at the beginning, because. Obviously, we don't really need to save tires a lot on road courses, but IRP is a big place to save tires if you want to be strong at the end. Yeah, plus that two-lap qualifying session too. That's a lot of fun. Oh yeah, I mean, I coming from karting, I was used to it. Three, you know, green, white, checkered yeah. and stuff, but that was that was really cool. You know, you're coming out and you have two laps to do it. Get it done, right? Yeah. So, okay, here's the one thing we'll cap off with this. Last year you started late, so there were expectations of maybe a little bit lower, right? You had certain goals you wanted them to, to make. What are the goals for this year? Full season, you've had a lot of testing time, you're with a fantastic team. For you, for Max Garcia, what's the goal? What is, you know, what's the expectation for 2024? Just to be a contender at the front. You know, if we can show up every weekend and be a contender to win, I'll be very content at the end of the year. And if you're there, you're probably gonna win some races. Yeah. Yeah, as we know folks, Paps Racing can win races and, and you know they can win races as well. Let's cap things off with your team. You have, you've got a great team with you here this year as well. Hudson Schwartz, a young driver, moving up from junior. Sam Corey with you again this year. You're gonna have some pretty good data in the, in the, in the team tent. Yeah, and not just that, we we're probably the youngest team on the grid, which is crazy to think about. Two 14 year olds and a 16 year old. True so, enough. So, Besides good data, we're, we are the youngest team. Max, thanks for the time. Thank you, Rob. Every season when we're getting to the last couple of months or last couple of weeks before the start of a new campaign, we're always looking at the drivers that we think we're going to be talking about throughout the season. Max Garcia is one that most definitely will be up front in USF 2000. By the time we get to Portland in the finale, will he be the champion? Will he win the scholarship to move into 2025? We'll see. I can guarantee you this, he's going to be fighting for race wins from St. Petersburg onward. Thank you so much for tuning in to another show, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rob Howden. Bye for now.